This morning we're going to go through the operation of a standard US Jet Inc. 4018-300 that you see behind me. The first thing we want to cover is safety. And today there are far more pieces of equipment you can wear to protect yourself. This is the safety jacket. So you put this on. It'll protect your upper body should a hose burst or a nozzle come out. It's going to protect your upper body. The gloves are essential for anybody working a jetty machine. These can take a direct hit of 3000 psi or a rotary hit of up to 7500 psi without penetrating. So with your safety glasses, gloves, jacket and hard hat, you're now ready to operate the equipment. So that covers the safety gear that we're going to start with. The main components of a jetting unit are your water pump, your diesel engine, your water tank, and then the reel. Now here we have a hat silent pack diesel, and before you start off in the day you need to check the oil. Very simply, check it's up to the mark. If you need to add any, it goes in the same place as the dipstick. Your pump has a little red dot on the oil side gauge. The oil needs to be up to that level. And remember, if you're working on a slope, you need to try and have the unit flat so that the oil circulates properly. You don't want, want to operate it on a very steep incline. Okay. The pump is belt driven, and this is your belt guard. So underneath here is a rotating belt, driven by the engine. The water pump is a 4,000 psi, 18 gallon a minute machine, and it can run dry without damage. So if you're using the machine at any time and you run out of water, you're not going to harm the unit. Just idle the engine down, retrieve your hose, go and fill up. On the pump, you have a bleed right there to bleed the air out of the system. You have a rupture disc right here that in the event of overpressurization, this rupture disc will blow and you'll need to replace it with some in the toolbox. The most important thing on this unit is your filter. You've got a filter in the top of the tank. That's a sock filter. That's going to catch a lot of the material that's coming from the fill line. Your main filter is down here and it's important that you clean it at least once a day. In order to clean the filter, shut the water valve. You can drain a little bit of water out of the, out of the pump here. Okay, and now we can take the filter off. This is the mesh screen. And it's important to look inside the screen because that's where it catches all the material. There's also an O-ring, so make sure you don't throw the O-ring away when you cross the water. Put the O-ring back in, insert the filter. Once you've cleaned the filter, most important, open the valve from the pump. Okay, and open your bleeder and allow the water to come out. Now you know you're, you've got that valve open. There are two areas to drain oil. You need to drain the pump oil. It's right here. <coughs> and if you need to drain the engine oil, it's right there. We have a special tool for draining the engine oil. This is the tool you use to drain the engine oil. You simply disconnect the plug, screw this in, it will allow the oil to drain out into a bucket. You need to change the oil after the first 50 hours and then after 250 hours. The oil filter is right there. Fuel filters are inside and so are the air cleaners. Okay, but you just need to do the oil filters after the first 50 hours. So before you start attaching the trailer to your vehicle, you need to understand that we have a turn 5 16 ball hitch that needs to be secured onto the ball. 
There are a couple of safety pins here that you need to insert. One goes through here. Like that. And the other one is right here and it goes in the back here. And comes all the way through. Then you've got to add the chains. You've got two chains, make sure they cross over. And then you've got the emergency brake, which needs to be attached to the vehicle as well. The driver should be responsible for attaching the trailer, the chains, and all the pins. The last item is the cable for the lights or the electric brakes. So don't forget to attach that to your vehicle as well. And don't forget to wind up the jockey wheel once you've got it attached so you don't drag that down the road. This is your antifreeze tank. Over here is your diesel tank. And later on in the program, we're going to show you how to antifreeze the unit. We're now going to walk to the back of the machine and go over the basic controls. got 500 feet of half inch hose on the machine and this 10 foot orange leader hose is an indicator of where the nozzle is in the pipe when you're pulling it back. In other words you go out as you pull back when you see, the, see this orange leader hose appear you know you're 10 feet from the nozzle it's time to slow down. The hydraulic controls are quite simple. In this position the reel is locked. If I go to the detent position I can undo the reel by hand, okay? In the power position, up is in, down is out. Here's the reel speed control, so I can control the speed of the reel by operating this lever here. That is my throttle. This is my water lever. In the up position, I'm going to have water coming through the hose. In the down position, the water is going to recirculate back to the pump. This is my pulsation valve that induces a pulse in the hose. I have to lower the, the pressure to 1500 psi, engage the pulsation and the hose will jackhammer. And that is designed to go long distances or around multiple turns. Not to be used all the time, it's just an intermittent, uh, an intermittent use item. This is my pressure gauge and my hour meter. This is my beacon light, and this is my ignition for running the engine. So, we're now going to start the unit. First of all, I'm going to put my gloves on and do my jacket up. I'm always going to start the unit in the down position where the water is recirculating. Under normal circumstances, I would run the hose through my tip. Okay, that helps you guide the hose back onto the reel when you're using it. In this situation, I'm just going to do it outside of the guide. I'd run it through my tiger tail to protect the hose when it's going into the pipe. I would put my nozzle on and insert this at least three feet into the pipe before I start the machine. As we have no nozzle on, I'm just going to start it anyway and show you what it looks like. Water valve in the down position or return to tank. Crank the engine. I'm ready to operate. Water on. show you the hydraulics now. Start the engine. of the 
units, you have a swivel reel. In other words, you have to press this lever and rotate the hose reel and line it up with where you're trying to work. Remember though, only use that when you're, well, the pressure is off. You've got swivel joints on the hoses down here and they're not designed to, to rotate under pressure. So just always set your hose up before you have it under pressure and you go left or right and lock it in position. So now we want to antifreeze the machine before we put it away for the evening, assuming it's going to be below freezing tonight. It's important, first of all, to drain your main water tank. So you would open this and drain your main tank, okay? You would then, once the tank is drained, you would shut this valve. You're then going to open the valve from the antifreeze. Eventually, green is going to come out. Just getting rid of the fresh water for a minute. Okay, starting to turn. So now we're going to run the machine to antifreeze the rest of the unit. Okay. What I'm going to do now is basically antifreeze the high pressure hose, which is very important because if you don't antifreeze the hose and it freezes solid, you're not going to be able to use the machine. So before I start the unit, I've got to make sure the water's going down the hose. I make sure the nozzle is off. I'm going to raise the, uh, the um, water valve. just want to pull a little bit of hose off. Now I'm going to crank the machine and basically get the water come out until the antifreeze comes and then I know it's ready. While I'm doing that, I'm going to crack the pulsation valve and the bypass valve. Make sure those get antifreezed as well. So here we go. Up. Just do it at idle. to the return to antifreeze line and now we're set for the evening so that covers the antifreezing of the unit what we're going to do now is de-antifreeze it to show you how to do it in the morning when you want to uh, run the machine again so we're going to have to go back up to the front, shut the antifreeze valve and open the water valve. You can see the green antifreeze is throughout the system. So now we're going to shut the antifreeze valve, open the water valve. We're going to keep the water valve in the high pressure position and it's going to basically recirculate the antifreeze back into the tank. <laughs> until it's nearly full. Now some people can put the hose in here or some people want to put it at the back where I've got it connected now. I'm going to remove the, uh, the cap just to let the uh, tank breathe and I'm now going to make sure this is tight. water valve in the up position. What's going to happen now, fresh water is going to purge the system.
now we've purged the system, we're ready to operate the machine. <laughs>